Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Kindly be seated. Friends, good morning. I give you greetings in the name of Triune God. It's a divine providence once again as his mercy showed upon our lives and has given an opportunity to stand before him to lay our attention to his voice. Sure, another opportunity where God has extended in our lives to heed, to hear, to get transformed for which we are grateful to God. Today, the Church of South India is observing this Sunday one of the most important element and aspect in one's life that is differently abled dignity and dependence. I don't know to what extent do we truly heed to this or pay attention to it or we take serious in our lives. It is also many times called as very popular word that we use is handicapped. For ages this terminology was in force. But in the recent past this is being replaced by the word differently abled. And again there was a big controversy. And again now the people who have been differently abled they wanted themselves to be identified as handicapped or disabled. Now the whole issue is who is disabled? This is a major question that probably in this short span of time we need to find an answer. When I say that you are disabled, I am sure you would be angry at me. Isn't it Prabhana? No one wants to identify themselves disabled. And in a similar way, no one wants to identify that neither ourselves or others are differently abled. The problem is, we are in an illusion that we are the only abled under the clouds. No one is able and we are perfect and we want to champion every cause under the clouds. As long as this notion exists in human mind, I am sure no one is going to help us. Even God may find it difficult for such people who believe that they are the only able and self-righteous under the clouds. Again, let me come back to the question, who is disabled? Okay, let me ask, how many of you would like to have a chocolates? I have got it from Malaysia and uh, Korea, I will give it to you. If at all, if I give you five chocolates, how many of you would like to have it? I'm sure there must be one, two, three. Isn't it? <laughs> how many of you would like to have only three? I can give five if you want, but you have to have it. And there must be crowd who likes only three. And how many of you would like to have only one? 
Ah, yeah, yeah. Hands are being raised. How many of you don't like chocolates? There must be at least one. Now you tell me, who is normal? The person who dislikes chocolates, is he normal? Or the person who consumes two chocolates, is he normal? Or the person who consumes three chocolates, is he normal? Or the person who consumes five chocolates at a time, is he normal? Now you tell me who is normal. Amma? All are abnormal. For a person who consumes five chocolates at a time, he tends to look at us, what a fellow he is. It is a Malaysian chocolate, that fellow is rejecting. What an abnormal fellow. And the person who dislikes chocolates will look at and stare at us, says that, oh my God, he is not a human being. Uh, he is having five chocolates at a time. That fellow is abnormal. This is a fact. This is the truth. We have never realized that we are differently abled. That is a problem. We always try to stigmatize others. We always try to judge others. We always try to possess ourselves that we are perfect. As long as this stays in our head, no one is going to help us. That is the beauty of the church of South India. <coughs> that is the reason I always tend to say that it is a scientific church. The theme itself projects and portrays how much care does it take for the people of the church of South India. Look at the beautiful theme. Differently abled. Differently abled. This is being projected from the book of Genesis chapter 1 till the Revelation book of chapter 22. Even in the diversity, the beauty of the divine is projected. That is a triune God. Even in the diversity, the beauty we can see. Even in the formation of the man and women, Adam and Eve, they were differently abled. They were differently abled. That's the reason God has intended to, they were help me to one another. This human race should recognize and realize. When we say we are differently abled, we need to affirm the greater fact that every human being who are differently able are carving or looking from the other person are the two important elements. That is the dignity. Don't judge. Don't look down unto the person who is not like you. Believe that the person is definitely like you, not like you. But he is differently abled than you. Therefore, every individual under the clouds should learn the minimum courtesy that you are bound to give dignity to the other. By virtue of the human being, that you are bound to give dignity to the other. And secondly, don't never ever forget the fact that you are dependent on others. We are dependent either directly or indirectly. Solely you cannot make your life under the clouds. No, not at all. For anything, for any reason, you have to look for the other person that is simply a dependence. This 
these are the very two important crucial elements that today the Bible talks about. Today the word, the God wants us to realize the greater fact that one is you are differently abled. Second is, since you are differently abled, you deserve dignity and you are bound to give dignity to the others. And thirdly, since you are differently abled, you cannot stand by yourself forever. Therefore, God has made you as a dependent on fellow human being and dependence on God. This is the theme that has been given for us today. The scripture portions talks a lot of us. Since I have the time constraint, I am not going to put it in a very elaborative way. But the Old Testament reading that has been given to us, you might have heard of that lesson or the interaction between Moses and the Lord Yahweh umpteen number of times. But today I am going to present, maybe in the Telugu worship, I am going to talk it in a very elaborative way. What could be the cause of Moses for his stammering. Today I am going to put it in a scientific reasons, some of the hypotheses why Moses has put before the Lord as the fourth reason to plead God Mujhe chhod do. Lord, leave me. Let me live my life. What could be the reason for it? My dear friends, the disability, sometimes it is hidden and it is not very easy to see. Many times, disability has affected a person like vision, movement, thinking, remembering, learning, communicating and hearing, mental health, and social relationships. According to World Health Organization, disability has three dimensions. One is the dimension of impairment. It could be body structure, functioning of the body, it could be mental functioning of a human being. And secondly, WHO has put this dimension as activity limitation. Since the body is not cooperating with a human being, Therefore, his activity is absolutely limited, like difficulty in seeing, hearing, walking, or problems solving. Thirdly, participation restrictions, working, engaging in social and recreational activities. Universally, universally, we don't find an approved definition for the di disability. Religion has given his, its own definition. Culture has given its own definition. Nations have given its own definition. Therefore, I am not going to look into it. But I would like to have your attention. Apart from physical disability, I would like to have your attention on something like the social disability. This is a model. It shifts focus to the society. We know that something which is not cooperating to the body, we deem it as a disability. But today I would like to present before you, that is the medical model, which has a certain probably physical, intellectual and psychological mental conditions of or a pathologic or abnormal behavior of a person. In contrast to the medical model, all the three Bible portions today talks about a social model which shifts focus to the society. Who is or who can be treated or called as a disabled person? All the three Bible portions presents the social model of disability. The 
undue restrictions that are being laid or imposed on the behavior of the person with the impairment to see to be imposed for example a dominant social political and economical ideologies which are being imposed on a physical impaired person this is a social disability and secondly the cultural religious perceptions regarding the person with disabilities the imposing of this ideology on them thirdly the paternalism in social welfare systems and fourthly discrimination by the society and fifthly the inaccessibility of the environment and information and lastly the lack of appropriate institutional and social engagement in this social model of disability it does not lie in the individuals but it lies in the interactions between individuals and society put it in a simple way your attitude matters it is not that you have all the ashta angas in a very perfectly functioning but how are you treating and what is the exhibition of your attitude unto the person who quote and unquote tag labeled as physical disabled my dear friends traditionally biblically the theological perspective has been identified with the three theological themes this is being proposed by iceland one of the scholars who has proposed that three theological perspectives have been looked unto the disability and that i have a certain obstacles for the people with the disabilities first is conflating disability with the sin theologically we tend to understand that this disability is a cause of one's sin that's what the bible very popularly it keeps on projecting of course we too have that notion isn't it say yes or no when it comes to the matter of judging we always stand in the forefront devudu eddoda gooddoda isn't it always we try to ascribe the disability of a man that stating that the fruit the reward of the papa karma is just he is bearing and secondly secondly it is disability viewed as a virtuous suffering some of the nations in some of the cults some of the uh, faiths it is believed that you are suffering with the disability in this world means that you are just washing away yourselves or you are paying or ransom for the life that which you have lived earlier therefore you are becoming pure by bearing the pain of disability this is the second understanding theological traditional understanding or its perspective thirdly it perceived people with the disability as a case of charity my dear friends in 1994 Iceland scholar has bought disabling theology today we teach to our students of this theology disabling has also got its own theology which i am not going to look into it but just i would like to have your attention on the old testament reading and i'll just withdraw myself from this pulpit dignity reformed which is found in the book of Exodus chapter 4 verse 10 to 17 Moses was having a problem with speech impediment 
as the conversation between Moses and Yahweh it goes on and on and on and Moses at the end try to say that Lord I cannot talk it has got various number of reasons hypothetical reasons are being given in the history which I am not going to touch in all the conversation Moses was very honest in stating that your mission is big but my mouth is small I am not a perfect fellow to bear the torch or the yoke of the mission of liberation and Jesus was trying to convince Moses he has given five excuses the first excuse we find in the book of Exodus chapter 3 verse 11 he says I am not good enough very humble man very honest man by looking at all the merits and demerits of all the abilities before the mission Moses confessed in the presence of God Lord I am not good enough for this great mission God didn't accept Moses' answer. The second excuse Moses found is, I don't have all the answers. I don't have all the answers. Many number of times, people persist us to find an answer. And we always want to know the answer. We keep pressurizing to know the answers. My dear friends, life is as such. We need to move sometimes even without knowing the destiny. We need to move sometimes even without knowing the rational answer. You know the life of uh, Antipole in African Antipole, have you ever, you might have seen them a number of times. It is such an antipole which just jumps around 3 meters high and 6 meters long. But when you keep it in a just small walls, 4 walls, it never jumps. You know why? You know why? Until and unless it confirms that I can jump, there is something much beyond this wall it takes a jump. In a similar way, when you don't have the answers, believe God has an answer for you. Ex this also didn't work out. Third excuse Moses was trying to give, people won't believe me because already I am at, under the orders of shoot at sight. I left Egypt and I'm a murderer. I have all the charge sheets against me. And if at all, if I go and project myself as the leader, Messiah, hope, blah, 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 and anything and everything, no one is going to trust me. This is a trust factor. Always we suffer with this. Because we have learned to look at the past and present. This is another major debacle for one's growth when you are washed in the blood of Christ my friends don't ever never try to get your past in your foot it is God as long as you look at the back you are not going to look at the future trusting other is their own business it is not your business your business is always to project yourself to give a reflection of yourself that you are no more what you were that's your business whether people trust you or not is their business the Lord said to Moses it's my business 
past is past you are going to be prepared for the future and last one a fourth one he says i'm a, i am a terrible public speaker eloquent their uh, hebrew word that has been used is hadibur that means i am not a versatile or i am not a public speaker i cannot convince people and even jesus has got an answer to his weakness the last one is he said meri baap ab to mujhe chhod de i am not qualified <laughs> a man who has bought up 40 years in the palace with all the kingly divine wisdom he confesses in front of god before you my master i am not qualified this is another biggest disease that human race has we always tend to think that we are qualified to blame others we are qualified to judge others we tend to leave that we have only born to judge you that's all that is my business no other business for me when moses confesses in the presence of god stating that i am not qualified my friends just for a moment think of yourself think of myself let us think of ourselves are we truly qualified when you are not qualified when your inner conscience says you are not qualified don't dare to judge anyone it is none of your business you have nothing to do with their life you never know the pain which they are undergoing don't add pain in others lives and you are going to reap the consequences of it time is not going to leave you take my word time is not going to leave you not going to spare you you have to reap the consequences of it now i close it my friends here the beauty is why god was after moses despite of all the five weaknesses you know the whole world including moses was looking at a person who is a talker he was who is a talker he says i can't talk i can't talk i don't know hebrew i don't know uh, egyptian language i don't know anything i don't know how to put the words nothing 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 i cannot communicate i am a poor communicator i can't i can't i can't talk i can't talk but the beauty of god's calling is the lord has looked the other side of moses god was looking for a worker but not a talker praise the lord praise the lord a person who has walked in the desert for 40 years god has made him as gpa what is it gps he has sudhi what is it gps god's gps was moses he was looking for a worker the world was looking for a talker that is the reason god was after moses he want a person who can make this lacks of egyptians to walk and walk and walk and walk who is absolutely acquainted with the geographical conditions where the lord is going to lead his people for 40 years human mind with great intellectuality like moses couldn't able to perceive the mind of god and he was just trying to project his weakness and trying to find an excuse but lord is looking his strength where he wants to use it for the purpose that is you are differently able in the sight of a human being you might be weak useless but in the sight of god he has made you differently able he is going to use you in a very purposeful manner therefore the people of god my friend try to give him give every human being the sense 
of dignity you are called to give dignity to the others to demand dignity of oneself and you are called to remember that you are dependent you are dependent depend on god equally depend on human being that is the whole purpose of our life may god grant such a strength and wisdom to accept the greater reality and look unto the lord where god is looking in our life in a very different way where the world has failed to let to look at your ability surrender to the will of god and he is going to uphold you and use you for his purpose amen